Shalom and a warm welcome to this international online midweek service. This evening is the 11th part of this series on the subject of gifts. We're so blessed that the subject continues to extend further and much deeper as we get to experience, not just by understanding, but we experience by becoming what we are hearing, what the mind of God is pertaining to gifts. And tonight is a special evening. We're so blessed that we are a part of this great company chosen by God to hear this peculiar word, welcome to the mountain top. My name is Sibla, joined in studio by my brother, Andrew, and in a few moments, we'll be hailing the presence of God's gift to mankind in this age. Man of God. Shalom. Shalom. It is always an experience. Mm. It's always an experience. I remember the last time that we gathered in this place, the delivery, the gift of awareness. <laughs> You never have the opportunity really to realize how ignorant you are until you are made aware by a greater gift of awareness. <laughs> and I believe that that's what we, that's what the viewers have been enjoying in this place, where we have come to the place where light is springing up and we are getting to enjoy things that we never knew about God, about ourselves, about even our place in God. Mm. And we are blessed to hear what we hear every day. Can you imagine that God doesn't perform miracles? <laughs> what did you think about that, Fios? God, God does, does not, not perform, perform miracles. Miracles. Whew. That was a downpour. Mm. Awareness. And, and I loved what you said concerning realizing how ignorant you are. And the, the, the enigma there is that the realization of ignorance is now proof of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Being present. Yes, yes. <laughs> because if the knowledge was absent, then the realization of ignorance wouldn't be present. Yeah. Exactly. Because at the point where you realize that I'm ignorant, it's because now you know. Now you know. So it's, it's almost the, the presence of a different state that lets you know of the previous state that you were. So maybe we'd need to correct our grammar on that. I, I was ignorant, I was ignorant. <laughs> now Be, I know. before the time that we received the information. But awareness, the gift of awareness, you begin to love a gift you never knew existed. You begin to see its importance in such a great light that you feel like there's no other gift more important. Uh, this is when we're talking about gifts that exist under the gift of Jesus. You begin to realize that I can be so loaded with all spiritual blessings and spiritual, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And yet, if I'm not given that awareness, which is the catalytic agent yes. that activates the other gifts, then I can be so gifted so capable and yet achieve so little. And so the explanation of the gift of awareness and the awareness that comes with the gift of awareness and the realization of the awareness. The gift awareness. that knows itself by itself. Mm. There are a lot of wonderful words, especially one in particular that our father uh, mentioned uh, concerning the advantages of the gift of awareness, concerning the balance that a minister receives mm. because of the gift of awareness. It reminds us again, pulling us back to Ezekiel mm. chapter two, where what God was instructing Ezekiel to perform there and what actually happened was the impartation of balance. Mm. And what then fascinates me when I look at that is the congruence, the unity, the harmony between the description of the Ezekiel interaction and then our Father pulls us into understanding the ministry of Jesus and how it wasn't the God part of Jesus performing miracles, but
but it was the man part yes. that was performing miracles. And then you look at the importance of Ezekiel not to be caught up in a spiritual experience, neglecting the flesh, the flesh. but the importance for him to be awakened even in his physical to his aspect. physicality mm. so that the Lord can then expressly communicate with him. And also because of that, he becomes more usable within the hands of God. Wow. It, 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 it draws me to really come. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this because it's, a, it's the gift. It is the gift. <laughs> and, and I love this gift especially because it, it frees us from that journey mm. of searching for uh, a gift to come. Mm. We are being delivered and have been delivered from an expectation that God at any point is going to give us something that was somehow left out mm. when he gave us the gift of himself, mm. the gift of his son, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so we, we are now looking not to receive from God, but to realize what we have received. And that changes everything. everything. We are migrated from a position of being sons and daughters that are more, uh, that lean towards begging God in prayer where we are constantly weeping before God, begging for more of abilities that he should give us. God, why are you depriving me of such and such? The gift of awareness yeah. makes us realize and recalibrate our prayers to be prayers of gratitude. And from that position of gratitude, Miracles happen, like what our father explained to us, where in, in times of lack, Jesus didn't complain, he blessed. he blessed. So from that position of gratitude to the father, we are placed in a position where the mankind part of us mm. expresses the miraculous because we are aware that we are not begging God, but we are in a position of gratitude. We are saying all this because we are grateful. We've been waiting. The Lord is about to speak to us. Yeah. And we invite the viewers to please um, make your comments known. Let us know what you're thinking about this series. Uh, each mm. session, there's something that the Lord is impressing on you every time because we're getting new knowledge. So please let us know. Um, if you want to make your comments be seen, please be sure to subscribe so that we're able to participate and to hear from you as well. But uh, we are looking forward and we're anticipating what is coming now. Indeed. And so allow us now to introduce our great father as we embark on this journey. Shalom, our father. Beautiful evening. Thank you so much for having me. This is a wonderful night. Thank you. Yes. I'm so glad to be sitting here and listening to what you guys are saying. I don't know about you viewers. If what these guys were saying doesn't excite you, <laughs> I wonder what else <laughs> would be of interest to you. I really, really, really enjoyed that analysis, a recap of the gift of awareness. I appreciate your, your contributions and even your, your participation in, in these broadcasts. I didn't want to say much now. I was just thinking you should just continue. <laughs> <you guys. laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's quite interesting, quite interesting, quite interesting. So I'm glad to be here. I'm so excited and even super excited to be sharing with you the word of God and giving you insights and shedding light upon your darkness so that you are brought to that awesome place of understanding where you get to know God better and even in the process you get to know yourself. So we are, yes, we are on another very interesting gift, which in this case is the gifts of healing. And we are going to, of course, have our reading from the same uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, and then we focus on verse number nine. And I have some few things that I would want to help us know and even appreciate with regards to these gifts of healing and especially the operations of the Spirit of God. So let's look into that. And again, I pray that uh, God will uh, cause his face to shine upon you and even grant you the attention that is 
required by this word that is coming. It's coming at a, at a deeper proportion and that requires a lot of attention. And the Holy Spirit, I believe, is present to help you receive, ingest and digest until the word that you hear becomes a part of your being. And that's the miracle that I believe the Holy Spirit is going to perform Thank you. tonight. Give you an understanding that is even beyond your usual understanding of things. So be ready because the light is going to be shining even brighter tonight. You will never walk in darkness again. Oh, wow. Okay, so God is here to make us know. Thank you, Father. Yes. So let's talk about the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing. So let's have our reading first then we get into, into that. Thank you, Father. Yeah. First Corinthians 12, verse 9. Yeah. To another, faith mm. by the same Spirit. Mm. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Mm. To another, the working of miracles. To another. Okay, let's just focus on the gifts of healing, there is a reason why Paul had to put it that way. So that we, in our attempt to investigate how far the Spirit of God can go in revealing himself and in manifesting himself through us, we must have an appreciation of the extent at which the Holy Spirit can go in terms of his manifestations. Those manifestations being multiple manifestations, several manifestations. And something of interest, if you notice that from verse number four, verse number four contains the spirit manifesting. And also verse number five contains the Lord manifesting. <laughs> and verse number six contains God manifesting. That, is the, that, that is the Father. Yeah. It's impossible to see. <laughs> <laughs> now there are diversities of gifts, mm. but the same spirit. Diversities, multiple. Wow. The, the gifts are diverse, but the spirit is the same. That's verse. Verse 4. Yes, verse 5. Verse 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same law. The same law. Difference in the administrations of those gifts, but the personality behind those administrations is the Lord, Jesus himself. And verse number 6. Verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, mm -hmm. but it is the same God, the same God, which worketh all in all, is God who is working all in all. All that is being worked is God, and He's working in all those that are working. Okay, mm -hmm. it's Him that is working, and in all mm -hmm. that are working, thank you, He's working from us. Thank you. That's powerful. Father. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have the Holy Ghost over there. In as much as the Holy Ghost is God, you also have the Lord in as much as the Lord is God and also you have God the Father. So when gifts are manifesting, it's a clear manifestation of the entire Godhead. It's a manifestation of the entire Godhead. Wow. Now, but he's not going to perform those miracles as God. We have to really uh, cement that one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hear me on this one. Yes, then he goes on to touch on something so critical. There is, must be a reason why he preferred putting it across that way. That when it gets to the healing part which is again a manifestation of the Spirit, which is a manifestation of the Lord, which is a manifestation of the Father. It comes in various forms. Hence, gifts wow. of healing. 
So they might not be, yes, we might look at it as different healings, yes. but these are gifts of one healing, gifts of healing, gifts, gifts, not a gift of healing, gifts of healing. Though what you might see in operation through your life might be a gift. And another one has a gift. And another one has a gift. And you see that there is a difference in all of these gifts. Or you can have multiple gifts of healing. <laughs> now the reason why these are gifts of healing, it is because of the different human components that require healing. Okay. Mm, okay. Mm. We are, as we have known ourselves to be, tripartite beings. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is more to yourself than just the spirit. There is more to yourself than just the soul. There is more to yourself than just the body. Mm -hmm. And all of these components of yourself at some point, they require recovery. Mm -hmm. Having gone through trials mm -hmm. and tribulations and persecutions and afflictions, mm -hmm. You will find yourself in a state which is abnormal, where you're non-functional, where you, you realize that I've just been immob immobilized. Mm -hmm. And while you're in that state, there is going to be a requirement. There's going to be a need for a gifted man to be raised by God, to come your way and administer a certain type of healing which is consistent with the nature of that component mm. of that part of you. Hence, the gifts are supposed to be gifts and not just the gift so that we can adequately administer healing when it comes to the healing of the soul. Mm -hmm. And we will also administer healing when it comes to the healing of the spirit. Mm. And we can also administer healing when it comes to the healing of the body. Hence, gifts of healing. So you can be limited in your administration of these gifts, especially if you don't know how to even go beyond the healing of the body. Why are they gifts? Today you are going to realize that these are not only pastors evangelists, prophets, teachers that are a part of this administration. We are going to rope in even physicians and doctors mm -hmm. into this. Hence, gifts mm -hmm. of healing. Because in the way that God is going to heal certain methods, you are going to find them to be so physical mm -hmm. because they are physically addressing your physical afflicted component. Thank you. Thank you. To think that one of the gifts of healing <laughs> can even be medicinal. Mm. Where an individual is empowered yes. by the Spirit mm. of God to physically administer healing to the sick and it falls under gifts of healing mm -hmm. and yet he is not supernaturally healing the sick he is physically even by the use of medicine and drugs mm -hmm. but his understanding of the usage of herbs can be as a result of the inspiration mm. of the Spirit of God. Mm. Wow. I know we are going to have problems with that, yet, but, <laughs> but you will see in one context, a prophet handing over by the voice, by the word of God, 15 more years. Mm to Hezekiah who was about to die mm. because on his body 
was a boil. And you surely die. The instruction from God was you make sure that you put your house in order. Now, he's supposed to put his house in order because his body was out of order. Mm. Mm. So God is saying in, his, in terms of abilities, the only ability that you have currently yes. is that of putting your house in order. But in as far as putting your body in order, you don't carry that ability. Wow. Mm. So deal with what you can deal with now because you're about to die. There was a disorder in the body and a disorder in the house. Mm. So deal with the disorder in the house. You're going to die. Mm. And then he went on to pray. And then the prophet was brought back. And the message was 15 more years. Yes. You will still be alive. But right at the end of that chapter, you see the method applied in ensuring that this man then goes on to live 15 years. So an order had to be given. He instructed Isaiah as a prophet. He ordered that a lamp be taken and be put on the boil. Isaiah 38 verse 21. Yeah. For Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs. figs. Those are herbs. <laughs> and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. And you shall recover. Right in that moment, if you're a religious person, you read that and then you just, you just fly away and you don't get to see that. In that moment, you are witnessing a true prophet of God. Yes, Father administering herbs. If you were to give him another title, that's a herbalist in that moment. <laughs> that's a herbalist. If you administer herbs, you are a herbalist. And this is the same Isaiah who prophesied about the coming of your Messiah. And to us, the child is born. You choose what you want to be. It's up to you. It's up to you. But we have come across a prophet, a true prophet, Let's not talk about these false ones. Let's talk about Isaiah. And you, you, you hold him with great regard. All of you that are listening to me, you know him to be a true man of God, a great prophet of naught. But today we are catching him. <laughs> we are catching him today, making use of herbs. He did not lay his hands on the king Hezekiah. He ordered that a lamp of figs. of figs be taken and be put. Okay, you might say that's in the Old Testament. Now, when Paul says to Timothy, make use of grapes, wine, because you have got a condition. Timothy was sick. Yes. And his curse for your own information, was beyond even his father's ability mm. to heal. Mm. Not only because his father was weak, probably Timothy was not strong enough mm. to tap into the floor of his father. Wow. But the, the, the underlining uh, statement here is sickness. Mm. Timothy was sick. Now, if you hear of little wine, mm. you have forgotten of it being a plant. You've forgotten about it being a herb. <laughs> and he's ordering right in the New Testament that you make use of something that is so medicinal, mm. something that is not administered supernaturally, mm. and it's happening right in the New Testament. Mm. So I'm showing you two places where a true prophet makes use of herbs and he gives it to a patient, and also in the New Testament, we are seeing also that same thing happening. First Timothy 5 verse 23, nah. for reference. Uh -huh. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine. A little wine. For thy stomach's sake. It's because of your stomach. You have a condition that your father is aware of, and he tells you what to do. And it takes a certain level of maturity for a son to receive such a letter from a father and he still considers him a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. When your spiritual father, your man of God that you know to be highly gifted in the area of healing, he recommends that you take medicine. <laughs> that disturbs a lot of sons. As a father, you even know what a son is supposed to do medicinally so that he recovers. But you fear writing such a letter to him because of your misunderstanding of the gifts. Wow. Gifts of him. Gifts. So you wait for one gift. And if that one gift doesn't work, mm. and yet there is another gift, which again is of the spirit, but it is administered mm. naturally mm. and physically. Mm. Mm. Thank you. So the healing, you can have the healing of your body by the operations of a physician. And also you can also have a counselor that can also administer healing to your soul. Oh. A counselor can be a healer. I think there are, it's important that I give you a scripture in the book of Proverbs. Thank you. Yes, so you go to Proverbs chapter number 16, verse 24. And we also go to Proverbs 15 and verse number 30 so that we can reconcile the, the, this message. Thank you, Father. Uh, Proverbs 16, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb. Pleasant words. These are words, words spoken that are what? Pleasant. 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 If the words are pleasant, it's medicinal. Mm. It's like honey. Wow. To what? Sweet to the soul. It becomes sweet to the soul. So you can administer sweetness to the human soul. Wow. If you know how to deliver words that are pleasant. Mm -hmm. It can be a gift that you carry. Never should you then attempt to lay your hands on the sick. Already God has given you something to lay mm -hmm. on the sick, which is pleasant words. If you discover that you are gifted in terms of your ability mm -hmm. to always find a word in season, when you discover that you just, you seem to be so relevant. Mm. When somebody comes to you with a condition, you just, it's so easy for you to just know what to say. Mm. That becomes sweet, honey mm. to the afflicted soul. Now keep on reading. And health to the bones. That becomes mm. health to the bones. So right now I've just shown you another gift that you have. Yet you have been trying to lay your hands on the sick instead of laying statements, mm. words, mm. comfort, mm. advice. Mm. That also falls under the gifts of healing mm. if the words are pleasant. Go to that Proverbs again. Another one. All right. Proverbs 15 verse 30. Proverbs 15 verse number 30. Hear that. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart. The light of the eyes rejoiceth. rejoiceth the heart. Yes? And a good report maketh the bones fat. You see a report? Mm. Yes, but There is a report again. Yes. If the report is good, what does it do? It maketh the bones fat. <laughs> it makes the bones fat. I'm showing you, I'm showing you doctors, I'm showing you counselors, I'm showing you advisors, I'm showing you people with several abilities of healing that they were not even aware of. Mm -hmm. An ability that you carry that falls under the gifts of healing, it could be in a pleasant report wow. form. You speak and people recover. People lie healed so so this is just to show you how these gifts of healing are so multiple so multiple so are you aware of what it is that you are addressing when you are conducting healing 
what is it that you are doing? Are you aware of the part of that person that you are really touching? Be aware of that because these gifts are many. Now, in trying to bring healing to the sick, you must know exactly where they are hurt. You must know exactly where they are bleeding. There are times when we try to heal a condition. Again, you see, in Proverbs, it talks about a broken spirit that causes the bones to be dry. When the spirit is broken, should be chapter 17 of the book of Proverbs. Indeed, Father, thank you. Uh -huh. Verse 22. Uh -huh. A merry heart doeth good, mm -hmm. like a medicine. Yes. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. So when the spirit is broken, what dries up is the what? The, the bones. bones. The bones. This goes to show that you can then have certain physical afflictions as a result of your spiritual condition. Mm. It's a disease that you see reflecting in your body because your spirit is not well. That kind of a condition requires that you get healed first in the spirit man. Mm -hmm. Then the recovery happens physically. physically. Wow. So there are such diseases that even doctors cannot cure you from. They cannot heal you from because they extend. The condition's tentacles is far reaching. It goes beyond what you can do physically to the body. A man is physically afflicted because of his spiritual um, brokenness. The brokenness of the spirit is now causing the bones to be dry. He is dry physically because he is spiritually broken. So in that environment, you require another man with another gift, hence gifts. Mm. I'm following that. So you administer healing to the spirit of the man and the recovery happens. You see it manifesting physically. The bone starts to respond to the healing that has occurred. Now, there are certain things that we see. It's like a, a wound, yes. okay, yes. that is refusing to heal. Mm -hmm. You have a wound on your physical body and you are not recovering. A doctor goes on to investigate further beyond the wound. What is it that is not promoting the healing or the recovery of the wound? Sometimes you are diabetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody who knows, just, I've seen you with this wound for the past two years. Then he goes on to look for another reason. So what the wound is doing is to expose a hidden condition. You know there is something hidden behind the wound that fails to recover. You get to see something greater than just the wound, which is diabetes. So what are we saying? We are saying you can look at the condition, the dryness of the bone, and you go beyond the bone. Mm -hmm. You will identify a broken spirit. Mm -hmm. So people can be sick physically because of their spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. And when you get to their spirituality, you realize that probably as a physical physician, mm -hmm. you cannot administer healing at that point. Mm -hmm. yes. Then you now have to create space for a man who is supernaturally gifted, mm. whose healing is compatible with the spirit of the man. Mm. Yes. You heal that man at that point, mm. and then he recovers physically. So all of these healings are there as gifts of the spirit. If you are in an intensive care unit, you are still experiencing the working of the spirit mm. right there. It's one of the gifts which is by the Spirit. The Spirit is giving physicians an understanding of your condition. Mm. The comprehension of that diagnosis is by the Spirit. That is why even when a report comes back, even when a scan has been done 
and x-ray has given its um, findings. There is still a need for the physical man to give an interpretation to what the machines are saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the ability to interpret those diagrams, you need the spirit so that your analysis of what you're looking at becomes accurate. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Radiologists never knew they were spiritual like that. They are very, they are gifted. That's why doctors are supposed to wow. be celebrated. Wow. They are gifted. Wow. Physicians are highly gifted. Mm. They are operating under the, in as much as some people might not believe that, no, 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 no. the gift of the, uh, of the spirits are not that physical. And yet, mm. are you saying they are not gifted simply because they were trained? You're assuming that a gift doesn't require training. That's your problem. How come a man that is gifted in music can go to a musical school? There's a school of music. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. It is that gift that they train there. So it doesn't mean that the person is not gifted because he has been trained. Mm -hmm. It is the gift that they train. Mm -hmm. There was the school of the sons of the prophets. Yes. They are gifted. It was the gift of the prophetic that they were training. Wow. So what makes you think that a physician is not gifted simply because he was trained? <laughs> no, training cannot nullify the gift. It is the gift that they train. Mm. If you try and go there yourself, go and get the same training. If you are not gifted in the ministry of health, you fail. If you pass, it is that gift that passes. Mm. So training can even be evidence of the presence of a gift. Yes, because that's what they train. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Failure can actually be again proof that there isn't any gift. Mm. Mm. This is deep. You, you train what is there. Mm. Yes. You educate what is there. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. So these are people that fall under men and women of God. Mm. Yet they are administering healing physically. Mm. They fall under. They fall under. Men and women, of course. Yes. <laughs> this, this, this delivery, Father, you are, you are putting to bed any contention, any war that was there between um, the spiritual um, or religious institutions and the medical fraternity. Mm -hmm. Because you are marrying the two, you are showing how the one is an administration of a gift, just as the others, those supernatural in their nature or in their administration, they are also administration of the gift, but it's one spirit. You're mm -hmm. going back to that point of it's one Lord, it's one God, and it's one spirit at work. And like what and like what our father is saying, if a physician can encounter a situation where the bones are so dry, they've done everything, and they don't know what's going on. So they have to t take that same patient by reason of their gift discovering that this bone is dry beyond what beyond my what, capacity. Yes. And they hand it over to another gift in the same class called healing. Yes, in class, <laughs> and, yes. And then the, another healer who has a Use different the spirit. Gift, uses the same spirit mm -hmm. to administer healing, but to the spirit To the spirit now, that is broken. That is broken. Yes. Father, that is... And then the bone recovers. The bone recovers. Majority of the doctors are honest mm -hmm. to even let you know that this is beyond medicine. Mm -hmm. This is beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. Some can even recommend that you get prayed for. And sometimes, as men of God, we are shy also to make that same recommendations <laughs> and refer certain conditions to the physical physician mm. to say, go to the doctor. Certain cancers can actually be removed physically. Mm. And that becomes a working of the spirit. Wow. Mm. Now, so why do we seem to be in a fight? Because there are things that I might say, there are things that I might do even as a spiritual person and doctors are not in agreement. They are saying that's wrong. That's wrong, you can't do that spiritually. These are conditions that if you are to bring those conditions to us, we can deal with those conditions. Don't, don't lie to people. Yeah. These are things that we can physically do. So doctors can actually detect a lie coming from the pulpit, mm -hmm. and they know that's wrong. This thing can be dealt with physically. Mm -hmm. And also even us that are gifted spiritually, yeah. 
in that same gift, we can also identify a lie. And we can also come out and we say, doctors, here you are lying. And we are, we are right also. Doctors sometimes are also right. Because where you think there is a conflict, because somebody might wonder, but we have heard you speaking against the vaccines. Yes. You see, so that becomes another issue. Which vaccine? <laughs> yes. Which 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 which, which vaccine? You didn't condemn all vaccines. Never. <laughs> I kept on telling you that we have all been vaccinated before, but not this one. Yes. So the same specialists are coming every day, condemning what was done to the people. Yes. Yes. And yet people were so much against me giving me all sorts of names mm. as if I'm against what? Medicine. Mm, medicine. And yeah. As a whole. yeah. The same specialist people that are supposed to be talking because they were saying, no, you am just, yeah, just a prophet. I mean, no, keep quiet. We'd rather hear from the doctors. Now hear doctors now. They are coming out. What are they saying? So this is just to show you when something is wrong, we, we know it even from a spiritual point of view. So somebody takes that and then he, he makes it a, a blanket mm. condemnation of the entire field of health. Yet it's an isolated matter where we would have verified it spiritually mm. and known that your body is going to be tempered with mm. and it will never be the same again. Mm. You are no longer as you used to be before mm. in terms of your health. Things that can make you go to bed and you, you can't walk anymore. These are minor diseases that you should have recovered from. You've become so weak simply because of something that was wrongly administered into your body. Because we knew, we, we, we knew it. How can somebody just... All right, so let's keep on working on that because we're dealing with the gifts gifts of healing. There's something that the gift of healing can offer. There is also something that the gift or the gifts of healing can heal. Things that most of you people are not even aware of. I've just shown you one. When the spirit of a man that is broken gets healed. When the spirit of a man that is broken. So let me show you something. Are you aware of the ability that you carry as a healer to even heal other gifts. The gift of healing, as we see, <laughs> we are looking at nine spiritual gifts recorded there in chapter 12. But are you aware of the ability, the power that the gift of healing possesses to even heal other gifts? I was talking to you last time, last week, about the gift of awareness that is aware of other gifts. You are aware of other gifts by the gift of awareness. It's one gift that comes to make you aware of the other gifts that you have. So it's one gift pointing to the other gifts. You know the other gifts by that one gift of awareness. So I'm just showing you how these gifts are interconnected. Do you know that as a healer, you don't only heal sick people. <laughs> the gift of healing can go as far as healing other gifts mm. that are sick. Mm. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, as a prophet, you can identify a man who is gifted in terms of 
healing. Yes. And a man who carries an ability to heal can heal your prophetic gift. Hmm. It, this may, may come as a surprise because some of you are not aware of the sickness of a gift. Yes. Mm. Mm. The inability of a gift to function. Mm. Yes. Mm. There is a healthy condition mm. of a spiritual gift mm. that should be checked mm. to an extent where a man who has never prophesied can help your prophetic. You can be helped, you can be rescued. Yes. Your prophetic gift can be rescued by a healing minister who doesn't prophesy. He transfers an ability, he transfers wellness to your prophetic unction. Okay, okay, it's, 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 as if, it's as if I'm saying something. I've already told you that there is what is known as a broken spirit. How is the spirit broken? It's telling you of a condition of a spirit, that spirits can be sick. Yes. You can be a prophet. The tendency is when you're a prophet, you always want to identify another prophet and you think it's another prophet that can help your prophetic yes. gift. Yes. Yes. And yet you need to respect a man who is never prophesying, yet he's gifted in healing. In case your gift of the prophetic is sick and it requires recovery. A gifted man in the area of healing can lay his hands on you and suddenly your prophetic is quickened. You start to realize that these things I never used to see. But you got prayed for, not by a prophet, but by a healer. It means something then happened to the brokenness of your spirit. Your spirit was broken, therefore requiring recovery or healing. A healer he has a part to play in your prophetic grace. So you can move from one prophet to another, to another. You think they are going to help you uh, have your prophetic grace enhanced. Yes. And you keep skipping healers responsible for the recovery of your spirit that is broken. So take note of that. It's very, very critical so that you get to see how important every gift is. Okay, let's use this in, uh, in vice versa. Okay. If you think the gift of healing has nothing to do with the, my gift of the prophetic, mm. how come the gift of the prophetic can identify the gift of healing? Where a prophet can invite you and he tells you, you have a gift of healing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. That's the prophetic mm. identifying mm -hmm. the presence of a gift of healing. Now you get to know that you are gifted in terms of your healing abilities. Who has alerted you? The gift of the prophetic. It has made an announcement. Now you know that I carry the gift of healing. Next time when you stretch your hands towards the sick, you know, you are aware, you are so confident that I'm not trespassing. It has just been confirmed by a prophet that I carry a healing gift. So you know by the prophetic that you are healing gifted. <laughs> yes. you, you, you knew it by the prophetic. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was the work of the prophetic. It was the work of the prophetic. Timothy, remember the gift mm -hmm. that you received. Mm -hmm. yeah. It might be another gift, which is not the prophetic, mm -hmm. that you received during prophecy. Mm -hmm. So imagine that the prophetic mm -hmm. can invite you Brother, I see you healing the sick and you have never healed people before. Me? Yes. Who is identifying that? A prophet. Mm -hmm. Can that prophet heal? Sometimes he can't. Yet he can identify the healing ability within you and you are now made aware of an ability to cure sicknesses. What has brought that gift to your attention and you are healing the sick? Aware that I'm a healer. Mm. Who has made you aware? The gift of prophecy that cannot heal. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. The gift of prophecy that cannot heal. So you now know that ever since I got 
the prophetic. A prophet prophesied to me that I'll be healing the sick. And from that day, I started healing the sick. So what has activated your healing gift? It's not the healing gift. This is the prophetic. It has quickened the healing gift. So if I give you that illustration, you believe it. That yes, a prophet can identify, yeah. can locate a gift of healing in you. Yeah. And you start functioning. How about the healing gift? The healing gift as well can do something to your prophetic gift yeah, in terms of healing your prophetic gift. Okay, somebody might wonder, what really are you saying about the healing of the prophetic? Every gift that, you, not just the prophetic, whether it is the discerning of spirits, whether it is the gift of speaking in tongues or your ability to interpret them, you are not doing it at its maximum capacity. You are not exhibiting that gift okay. at its fullest potential. Okay. So weakness in your administration of that gift can be an infirmity. It can be a condition of your gift that requires healing. Yes, sir. There is something about healing that you are not aware of. That word in Greek doesn't only mean um, maybe the healing that you know it to be. It's an ability to not only cure, but an ability to make whole. Mm. Mm. Healing is an ability to make whole. So what if you are prophesying in part? You are not whole, you are not complete in your prophetic. You require the gift that makes you whole. It's the gift of healing. There, is, there can be a sudden increase in your prophetic. I know sons that are prophetic and their spiritual fathers are not. Mm. Ah, you. Ah, it's too and much. it's the healing gift of the Father that makes it whole. The prophetic of the Son. The prophetic of the Son is made complete. In as much as it's not, not, it's not hundred percent, but it becomes. But you see, with the gift of healing, I can show you a place. You, you know the place. With the gift of healing, Jesus made ten lepers mm -hmm. to recover. Mm -hmm. They were made to recover. They were healed. Ten were healed by the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. And one that came back was made whole by the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. So that you know, the gift of healing makes you well mm -hmm. and it also makes you whole. By making whole, what does it mean? Let me give you another interpretation yes, or right. another revelation. I've given you one before where, where the fingers that were missing are brought back yes. so that you are whole again. Mm -hmm. The nine that went, they only recovered the scars. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. The wound is covered, yes. but yes. missing parts are still missing. Mm -hmm. The ear is gone, never to be recovered. Mm -hmm. But when you are made whole, it's a restoration of what you would have lost, wow. being brought back by the gift of healing. Yes. The gift of healing can bring back losses. Hey. You can go to a healer because you have lost a property. Mm. You, ah. you can go to a healer because you have lost a contract. Recovery of the lost can be as a result of the gift of healing. I'm just showing you this so that you understand. Okay, let me, let me take it even further. The one that came back and was made whole do you know your understanding because of the condition that was declared by the Bible, which is leprosy. leprosy? You think he was made whole in as far as leprosy is concerned. <laughs> but by being made whole, it means because if all of these people were lepers, yes. right? Yes. And they were all epileptic. They were, the nine were only healed from leprosy. Okay, we're following. 
Mm-hmm. So if they had multiple conditions. Multiple mm-hmm. other conditions. But they only received healing from the leprosy. From leprosy so that they can be accepted back in the community. Any other condition, they are they, they are welcome. Mm-hmm. They are welcome. It's only this one that comes. It's you. only this one that makes you a castaway. So they recovered. So, but this one that came back might have had other health conditions. So by being made whole, you are seeing the same gift going further beyond just the physical disease that you can see. Which is far. So that guy is, is recovering from the rest of the diseases that he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is so deep. Okay. Yes, yes. Same applies with the man, you know, the man that was blind. Yes, Jesus said, okay, you need your sight back. Mm-hmm. You can see. But the man was a beggar. Yes. Ah. Jesus never did anything to alleviate that poverty. Yes. He was still poor. Mm. With his sight. With his sight. Ah. There are so many people that can see that are still poor. Mm. Yes. Because Jesus only gave him what he asked for, mm. which is sight. Mm. Hey. Yes. So I'm showing you this so that you can be gifted in your discerning of spirits. But your ability to discern spirits is sick. And a healer can heal you. And in that process, he's making your discerning of spirits gift whole. It's being made whole. It's being, you discern at a level of completeness. Discerning completely. You completely discern. <laughs> <laughs> Father, <laughs> you've said so much. I I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> But it's still not enough. We want more. <laughs> you know, the challenge I'm having is when I start to fall in love with the prophetic, then I hear healing. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, prophetic. Okay, healing. <laughs> healing now, healing. Everything is exciting. And then you start falling in love with, you know, one gift. Then you hear our father explain another one. You're like, ah, this one's not so... I think I want this one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're spoiled for choice. Because right at this beginning, the idea that a gift can be sick, in as much as we might have come across the scripture that says a broken spirit mm-hmm. can have an impact on the body, you are really elaborating on the brokenness of the spirit mm. and what it can entail, what it can cause, the limitations that one can experience. Yeah. Where now you are gifted, fine, but your gift is not operating at its optimum capacity. Yeah. And that can be regarded. In fact, that is sickness in the gift. Yeah. But our, at least my perception of the gift of healing was always that it's a gift that requires maybe an audience that are physically infirm, mm-hmm. that are sick in their bodies, and you administer that healing and they recover from those conditions. But now to think that their bodies can be recovered but inside them is a gift that also needs its own recovery. Yeah. And then to take that further, to say that even the ability of that gift to cause recovery of the lost, yeah. properties can be recovered. <laughs> Conditions can... Uh, Father, it's, it's, it's out of this world. We've never heard information like this, never heard this gift described in this way. Yeah. Nobody knows this. Uh, this is how some of these gifts work together. Yeah. This is how some of these gifts... Imagine... In that same scripture, you read about faith before you got to the healing. Yes, Lord. The gift of faith. Mm. Why is it connected to the book of James? The elders that pray for you, it even says, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Mm. Prayer, which is of the gift of faith, so, will so. save the sick. James 5.15 And the prayer of faith uh-huh. shall save the sick. You see that? Yes. It's another gift of faith that you find healing. Ah. You can be healed again by the gift of what? Okay. Faith. But you see, <laughs> while they were praying for the sick, the elders, mm. the elders there is in reference to a position. Yes. Uh-huh. It's a position of authority. Yes. It's a position of influence. It's not only referring to edge. Okay. It's an office, okay. actually. Okay. If you look at that word, um, um, an elder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so it's, it's a gift that entitles an individual to officially function. You are functioning from an office. Mm. 
from a position. Elder, a term of rank. It's a rank. Or office. Or office. So it means these men in church occupy offices because of their level of giftings. So you can go to such a man and he can pray for the sick, not so that the sick can recover. I've told you this before. Yes. He can pray for you so that you can endure. Yes. Yes, you taught us this yes. distinguishing between praying for the sick and healing the sick. Yes. yes. But you, if, if an elder can go as far as raising a prayer which is of faith, faith yes. then he can save the sick. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yes. It's... I'm just showing you this, that you can have a man who is not specialized in healing the sick. Yes. His gift is of faith. And yet he can heal you. With that gift. With that gift. I'm just showing you so that you understand. You are going to see that really the spirit behind these gifts is one. Is one. Is one. <laughs> yeah, it's because, really one. Because, yeah, it's really one. Because the gifts are so interconnected. Exactly. So you cannot do you cannot survive. You cannot overlook one gift. And you consider yourself or your gift superior. Because okay. one of these days, you're going to find yourself unable to walk spiritually. Unable to speak, to give an interpretation of tongues. And your mouth is muzzled. And you require a relief in form of healing. And only a healer can set you free. Only a healer can restore your speech. Wow. Thank okay? God. Yes, sir. So, since we're talking about the gifts of healing, the gifts of healing, the gifts of healing, the Bible talks about he restores my soul, mm. the restoration of a soul, the healing of a soul. Yes, sir. Yes, sir to its original state where your emotions are restored. You feel, you perceive according to the standard of a child of God. Now, now, let's not go there. Let's not go there. So, notice something very critical here. It is so, so profound. Yes, sir. Imagine how many things you can heal. I'm, if I'm talking to a healer now, I'm even letting him know yes. of how far he can go. Mm. How many things that are at your disposal in terms of bringing them back into their original state. Your ability to heal things that you never thought you were designed to heal. Mm -hmm. The healing of even spirits. Mm -hmm. The healing of even atmospheres. You can heal a soul by speech a pleasant good report can cure a soul can be fatness to the bones ha! you are healing as you are talking you are healing as you are talking as you are addressing masses given a chance to stand on the podium and you hold a microphone healing is occurring <laughs> are you aware of that Consider yourself gifted if you can speak and hope is restored, you are a healer. If you can speak and confidence is restored, you are a healer. You speak and there is forgiveness in the atmosphere. You are healing souls. It's a gift. Some of you might not know how to feel the gift of healing because you want to feel it. <laughs> because before you can make your patients feel it, you, some of you, you have that temptation. You want to, how, how does it feel? How do I even know that I'm gifted? I'm, I'm telling you already. Some of you don't know because you try to feel the arrival of the gift. How does it feel? Where is it really placed? Where is that gift situated in my body? So that some, one of these days, I just want to meditate and feel. I want to feel. How does it feel? You caught us. <laughs> yes. 
The gift of healing, sometimes when it is given to you or when it is manifesting, it's not every time that the gift of healing is in form of healing. Okay. It might not be healing that God gives to you to then heal the sick. The gift of healing might not come in form of the gift of healing. Explain it for me. It can be something that you look at and you wonder, what is this? Show us. And not even be aware that this is healing. The gift of healing can be the gift of health. It can be the gift of wellness. When you try to listen to the gift so that you can feel it, sometimes you feel it as health. Mm -hmm. You feel it as wellness. Mm. Closing your eyes and you try to identify where the gift is situated. All that you can feel is no pain in your body. No pain in your body. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you are not feeling any part of your body hurting. What you are having in your body is health. Mm. And that health, when it is given, it becomes the ministry of healing. Because health is contagious. Mm. Health is contagious. Health is contagious. The sharing of immunity mm. is the gift of healing. Oh, wow. What a definition. Yes. <laughs> You can, you can share immunity. I know if, if you're going to argue with me, doctors will support me on this one. That's why there is an adaptive immunity. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Teach us well. Thank you, Father. It's a, an immunity that you receive. It's an immunity that you get. It's an external, inherited immunity. Unlike the innate immunity that you are born with, there is another immunity that is shared, that you receive, that you become a part of as you grow. Pastor, I'm not sure whether people are following. They are following. Are following. following. Do you think people are following? Absolutely. <laughs> and, I'm, and amazed. <laughs> At the sheer extent of the gift of healing. Of healing. Of the gifts. The gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Many gifts of healing. So, I want us to be aware of that because I've just said a statement which needs to be supported. Yes. That you can inherit another man's health. Yes, man possible. The same way that you can inherit another man's medical condition. Yes. Yes. Is there transference in some of these diseases? Yes. yes. But there is what is known as acquired mm. immunity. Mm. Mm. You can adopt it. Thank you. It's acquired. It's an immunity that you, in, that you get. Mm. It's, immu it's health. So what, what, what is Jesus really saying by laying your hands on the sick and they recover? Jesus is simply saying that you are dramatizing when you touch with your hand an external body. That body becomes an extension of your body. So there is a sharing of immunity. It is being assumed that you have taken over responsibility to cure that body. So you're taking ownership as so you're touching people's heads. So the healing that is in your body, might, you, might, you might not identify it as healing, but mm -hmm. as health. Yes. Yeah, it's making sense. Remember when I said, let, let's look at how even the gift of Jesus of Nazareth, not, not God, mm -hmm. the gift of Jesus of Nazareth, mm -hmm. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With the Holy with Ghost the Holy and with Ghost power. And he went about doing what? Healing. Doing good. And he was healing the sick. Yes. It was the Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Not, not God. Yes. 
who was healing the sick. That one is gifted of Nazareth, the body, not God, the body. But notice, that gift, how does it work? You might want to know. I know some of you are a bit philosophical, so you, you will comprehend this. And some of you watching, I know you can comprehend this. Can you imagine that the gift of healing in him Oh my God, if the Bible says by his stripes, ye were healed. Another translation says by his wounds, you are healed or you were healed. Stripes and wounds the same. But the Bible is saying it is by the wound, it is by the stripe that you are healed. So if you are to ask Jesus to show you his gift of healing, what he shows you is a wound. Mm -hmm. How is that wound a gift of healing? How is the wound a gift of healing? Because the immunity is quickened at the time of affliction. When you are afflicted, when you, when you get wounded, mm. in that moment, mm. your Powerful. entire body is programmed to bring recovery wow. to that place of affliction. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay? Yes. So, uh -huh. are you saying at, 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 the, at the point of affliction, mm -hmm. that is when the gift mm -hmm. of, if, if I should call it the gift of healing mm -hmm. or, or the power to recover <laughs> is at its highest. I just like the smile. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is at its highest. Wow. Imagine because like, like when they, when they, when they inject, when they put COVID-19 into your body, mm, yes. they've given you COVID. Yes. And from that moment you become sick. Yes. And you are becoming sick because your body from that moment is trying to fight against that pathogen mm -hmm. from that moment. Mm -hmm. So your immunity in that moment is at its highest point. Wow. Oh, very, yes. very yes. active. Yes. So they wounded him. They put stripes on his body to activate the immunity in his body, which is the church, in his Ooh. body for immunity, so that we can be partakers of that immunity. Okay, we can receive that immunity. It's a shared immunity, which is not ours. We call it adaptive immunity and what? Acquired. Acquired. You acquire it from the Christ. So for that immunity to be activated, they had to put stripes on his body. Mm -hmm. So that was the introduction of a disease into his body so that the B cells can then activate the immunity system, right? And then the T cells, they go, they, they fight the, what? the disease. But, but we need to have an understanding of why Jesus had to have wounds on his body so that there's the creation of what? Immunity. And then we acquire that oh. as members of that body. We are partakers of that immunity mm. that was caused by wounds. So when you see the wounds on his body, he can tell you that you, you are assured of your healing because of a wound that I have. So it's deliberate. You afflict yourself with a pathogen. You introduce a virus into your body wow. so that your body can build immunity that can even be shared. So, not just that, let me take you even further. Mm, yeah. Apart from just diseases, one, yeah, yeah. he was also tried, mm. tempted mm. in all areas, mm. in terms of temptations, in terms of lust, mm. in terms of greed, mm. in terms of even attempting to kill his adversaries. Mm. He yes. overcame. Yes. Why? You are noticing the introduction, not just of a disease into his body, of a temptation into his body. Mm -hmm. So that there is build up of immunity against even lust, yes. even against the temptations. So that by that immunity, we can 
overcome every temptation. Oh, this is amazing. He was wounded for our transgressions. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh-huh. The chastisement of our peace was, was upon, upon him. Was upon him. And with his stripes we are, we are healed. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason why we some of us cannot understand some of these things it is because we think that we we are detached from his body. Wow. Immunity in his body is immunity in his church. And we are members of that body mm. that is healthy. So I'm saying you can the health that you have not the healing the health mm. that you have mm. if you just know how to share that you have realized the gift of healing mm. if you know how to share that, <laughs> <laughs> this is like, this is oh my god so father if jesus had never been subjected to these afflictions he had never received stripes if he had never been wounded then the immunity that he had as a Christ would have remained with him. Mm-hmm. So he needed to be wounded mm-hmm. so, for that, our, for, so that yes. we then receive the immunity mm-hmm. that he has. Because once he is wounded... That, that immunity becomes acquired. It becomes acquired. Yeah. Now. It's activated. We then benefit from that immunity. Yes. Wow. Yes. And to think that we have taken it even further to say even every sin, every sin, mm-hmm. he's on the cross. Mm. And people are against him. And he's even saying, forgive them, yes. for they know not. He had an opportunity to sin, uh. to kill. He never killed. He was at the well with a woman. Mm. He had an opportunity to sin. He never. Yes. So these pathogens were supposed to deliberately be injected into his body. Mm. And he builds immunity mm. against adultery. And we become partakers of that immunity. So, so it's a deliberate thing. A child is playing, the child is well, and you take him and then you inject him with a disease. Yeah. Just so that there is immunity in that body. Yes. So that child is protected for the rest of his life. If he's going to be sick at the age of sickest years, mm-hmm. there is already memory. Mm-hmm. Memory cells are there. Mm-hmm. If that disease gets into his body, it's never going to kill him now. Because you introduced it in smaller quantities mm. into his body. Mm. So it's recorded. That's why we are, we are confirmed overcomers. Mm. <laughs> he was tried in all areas. They made sure that every disease is introduced into his body. Mm. Mm. So already there is a record in our system that we have once been sick mm. and we recovered. We were once dead and we are now alive. We cannot die again. You believe in him, you will not die. It starts from that uh, moment. We are now partakers of that divine nature. So think about it. Just think about that. That's the reason why they had to open a wound. You cut yourself now. Your body immediately Mm. will start to build immunity. Mm. The tissues are coming to cover Mm -hmm. so that the blood doesn't keep on flowing out. Already you are in the process of recovery. But... If you considered yourself, if you are a healer, do you know that as a member of the body of Christ, you might not be the hand that touches, you might not be the uh, foot that walks, you might not be the spine that helps us stand, you might not even be the intestines, you might actually be the T cells. Mm You might actually be a killer cell in the church. You wait until there is an intrusion. If an unfamiliar spirit, if a demonic spirit comes in and it is giving prophecy, it's time for the killer spirit to identify that. Okay? So it's no longer just discernment. It's no longer just, okay, okay, you can discern because your body can discern. The B cells can discern that there is, there is a virus that has gotten into and it builds immunity. But who goes there to kill? The T cells. They go there to kill. 
Somebody can discern that this man is prophesying by an evil spirit, but he doesn't carry the capacity to command that demon to come out. They end at that level of discerning that this spirit is wrong, but they can't do anything with that wrong spirit. That's why people can come out and they can insult a certain prophet that they don't understand. He's using evil spirits. But if the prophet is to come and say, okay, go ahead and help me. They don't have what it takes. Yeah. They end at the level of discerning. Mm. But in terms of killing, mm. they don't carry that ability. Mm. They can identify mm. that here there is a trespassing here. Mm. A spirit has entered into the church. Mm. But they cannot prove. Do you know that with that spirit of discernment, you can, you can actually see that this woman is a witch. Mm. Yes. And that woman can even take you to court. <laughs> and you have the capacity to prove mm. to the people present that indeed she is a witch. Mm -hmm. That goes to show another ability that you might not have. Yes. Are, are you following this? Following yes. Okay. yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying this so that you consider yourself a cell. Okay. Mm, thank you. And if you are a healing cell and you are in the body of Christ, that healing cell must be given passage, access to every part. So as an arm, don't block wow. T-cells wow. from getting into your area. Mm. You might require healing there. Mm. You might have an unwanted visitor there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In as much as you are a hand that can handle, you cannot handle what has gotten into you. Mm. You can't touch it. Mm, mm, mm. This is why the church must open its gate wide and allow multiple gifts to function. Allow the T cells to migrate from one assembly to another wow. in case there is a virus there. Mm, thank you. But we have gone as far as blocking. You close your ministry, you make sure that a teacher doesn't come, a healer doesn't come, a prophet doesn't come. Yet there is a virus in that area. But you, you, we have to appreciate all of these gifts and be aware that, okay, so if I'm a healer, by the gift that he has given me when he gave himself to me, I now carry an ability to bring sanity, to bring wellness, and to bring wholeness to this situation. Because now you are aware of the gift, not only the gift that you have, but the gift that you are to the body. Right. You are a cell given to the body that is responsible for the healing of the body. So you are aware, where there is trouble, you go there running. You go there running you know that my opportunity has come. So they are ministers of God that are killer cells. They touch you. They kill whatever is wrong in your body. You see? Yes, ma'am. And this immunity, is we are, we are a part of that. Even if you claim, you hear people claim that Jesus was poor. What was that pathogen for? To immunize. To immunize, immunize us against poverty. Yes, against poverty. <laughs> yeah. Everything that we see happening on him was so that we are protected yes. against that. That is if we know how to acquire mm. his victory mm. so that his victory becomes our victory. So in terms of gifts of healing, they are gifts because of the healing of the body and don't hesitate to take your medication. It's not a sign that you don't have faith in the Holy Ghost. Mm. It's not a sign that you don't have faith in the Lord. Mm. It's not a sign that you don't have faith in the Father. Mm. When you reach out and you take medication, know it, it's not a sign of lack of faith. It is a sign that you have faith in what God has already provided in physical form. And that's your healing. There's nothing wrong with that child of God. There's nothing. 
What if I believe that God is going to heal me from this condition and I don't want to be taking medication? Get healed. Get healed first and then you stop. Mm. It's as simple as that. Once it is no longer there, why should you keep on taking medication? Mm. Yeah. Why should you continue in pain? Mm. And there is a medication. That medication falls under the gifts of healing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that is deliverance. That is deliverance. So people are asking the amen of God, should I go for this surgery? Should I take this medication? Because they, they think there is something wrong with the medication. Mm. And we are seeing a prophet in the Bible recommending mm. that a herb be taken. Mm. Herb. Yeah. <laughs> this is a herb. This is... <laughs> <laughs> But today, if I come out and I say Isaiah was a herbalist, it becomes breaking news. <laughs> and yet it's right there. It's right there. A lump of figs. You see? So, what if the healing that you're looking for is already given and something in terms of medication is in possession of that healing? Why not go for that medication? It is still God using those individuals yes. well-versed in that sector to administer healing to you. And those people are gifted, no matter the training, despite their training. They are still gifted because mm -hmm. they know how to conduct. They, do, they now know how to administer. So because of your soul, your body, your spirit, you require the working of the gifts because the gifts that are going to heal you in all of these three sectors are different gifts. There's a man who can heal you physically, he cannot heal you spiritually. Yes. And yet sometimes a man who can heal you spiritually can also heal you physically because you are sick physically, yes. because your spirit is broken. <laughs> <laughs> we, you cover a bigger space okay. when your healing is supernatural. Thank you for explaining. When your healing is, is, is spiritual, yes. you cover a lot of ground. So I know it when I'm healing the sick by the gift of the Spirit. I know that I'm licensed. I'm an elder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been given not just a gift, but an office yes. to heal. So I'm authorized mm -hmm. to cure diseases and afflictions. So I do that with no fear. Mm -hmm. Why? The prophet has confirmed to me that I'm a healer. I was made away by the prophet. Mm. So his prophetic has helped my healing. How about also my healing? How far can it go in helping the prophetic? Too far. You can also heal the prophetic. Think about that, that one of these days, you will come across a man who is going to lay his hands on you and immunity is transferred and you are protected. Ha! And your gift recovers. Mm. And your gift can rise up mm. and can walk, mm. can carry its bed. <laughs> your gift. Mm. Think about that. I think we can keep on going. I don't want to keep on going, but I think we have covered quite a lot. <laughs> True, Father. True, Father. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Man. Yeah. I think I, need, I just need to stop here and we'll continue. We'll continue. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know viewers if you are if you are getting this. I don't know pastors if <laughs> if this was of any interest to you, but this is the message. This is the word from God, and I want you to take it and believe it. Now you know, in as much as you might not have the capacity to command a man who is sitting on a wheelchair to rise up and walk, that man is still incapacitated in many other forms and a good report, a word in season, can help that man recover emotionally. What is there to heal? If a young girl was raped at a very young age, you might not see the wound today, but emotionally, she's still bleeding. Do you have a message? Can you speak and she recovers? You have a gift of healing. You are gifted. 
Why is it that you can walk into any room and people have hope? That energy that you bring into that environment can be a manifestation of a gift of healing. You are authorized by God to heal not only individuals, but even places. Even places. You heal people, you heal items, you can heal even the bitter waters and command that they bring salt. And with salt, you heal. With a wound, you heal. You. Where you are afflicted, your affliction can be an indication of your gift. It can be a sign. Can I show you something? Show us, Fabio. No. Show yes. us. Uh, my show time. us, Fabio. My, my, my time is up. My time is up. Your think affliction can be an indication. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can yes. be an indication. So just, 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 just have confidence in what I've told you. No matter how hurt you have been in the past, that wound can actually become the immunity that other people are looking for. Where you have had an experience, you have already built immunity against it. And you have now been made a hero by God in that territory. Because you are, you are considered an overcomer of an affliction. Mm. You will help millions of people mm. still suffering in that same affliction. Look at your wound. That can actually be your gift. Mm. It can be your gift. Mm. Now because you have, you have survived it. Those scars, you, have, you are a survivor. You can give us information. You can give us some knowledge on how to navigate those same circumstances. So we want also to be a partaker of your experiences so that we can inherit your immunity. How did you overcome? Can you share your story? Can you put it in a book? And you'll be amazed at how many people are going to recover emotionally just by going through pages of a book that you write. It's a sharing of immunity, how we overcame. Child of God, you are a healer. Know it wherever you go. We need you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. Grant you peace. As you go out, you are blessed. Even as you come in, you are blessed. You shall not fall. You shall not falter. You shall never be weak again. Strength has become your inheritance from today. Victory in every aspect. And your body recovers tonight from every sickness. And your spirit recovers from every affliction, from every limitation. Even your soul has been saved. You will feel, you will sense, you will think, you will reason, you will comprehend as a child of God. Your brain has been activated tonight. In the name of Jesus, I release you. Go and flourish and prosper and overcome because you are an overcomer. I pray that you will succeed. You will excel. You will ascend. You will fly. You will go beyond every barrier and every limitation and above every mountain. In the name of Jesus, every situation, every disease, every sickness is below you and under you from today. It is declared by the word of God that you are a victor. In Jesus' mighty name, let his victory become your victory. His health become your deliverance. His affliction becomes your freedom. Tonight is tonight. I speak against that disease in your body that it will not kill you. If you're experiencing dryness in your bones, dryness in your business, I heal it where it hurts. I touch the brokenness of the spirit. Let your business recover from the spirit point of view. Recover. Let your money be restored. I command and I speak wholeness into your body. Diseases that you know are disappearing. And diseases that you don't even know are disappearing. Be healed tonight. I speak this and I confirm a miracle and a testimony is coming. Jesus is healing you now.
now. This broadcast is a meeting healing like never before. Tonight, be healed. It's coming out of this voice tonight, this broadcast tonight. You are being healed now, now, now. From every affliction, be healed now. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. We speak healing over your entire body and we speak healing into your atmosphere. Let your environment recover from tonight. It is healed and you're also healed. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that whatever it is that you touch from now, there shall be a sharing of health. You lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. Touch your business, it shall recover. You touch your documentations, they shall recover in the name that is above every other name. Child of God, I love you so much. And until we meet again, shalom. Oh, that, that, was, that was so powerful. Thank you. No, that was so powerful. Thank you. Thank you. I, have, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Father, you gave an example of um, uh, how it is that I can know that I have the gift of healing. Um, and in this particular case, I'll say the gift of healing a disease. Because you said you, you, you can almost meditate and you can feel that from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, I'm totally fine. There's no pain. And by that, I can know that the presence of that health means I have the gift of healing. If you can share it. In this case of a, di of a disease. Yeah. What if I, I want to know that I can heal a gift? Is there an exercise that I can do away from the diseased gift or the sick gift? And I can do that here and I can leave my house knowing that if I encounter a sick gift, the gift of healing that I have can go to those extents of death. No, no. Most, most, most healers in that aspect are not even aware. Wow. This is why we had to talk about it. Yeah. Most healers, people that have gone on to even heal prophets and heal descenders of spirits, they don't even they, know. They don't, they're not even aware. They cannot even take credit of what then goes on to happen in terms of other gifts flourishing wow. because they were not aware until you're taught like this. Wow. Yeah. So like uh, I just gave as an example that you, it can be the wellness, mm -hmm. the wholeness, yes, the health that you are feeling, yes. which is representing the gift of healing. So it is that health that you share, you give. It can also be the affliction. Hmm. So somebody okay. might think I'm not gifted in healing because I'm always sick. Hmm. But notice that the fact that you are sick, it mm. means your body in terms of its immunity mm. in that moment. The graph is so high, yeah. trying to contend with an affliction that you are currently having. Mm. And you can share that immunity at that point. Mm. Do you know that men of God cannot even, most men of God that have been used by God in healing the sick, mm. they are yet to even understand this mystery. Mm. Why in certain days when they were, they even went to church sick, they were not feeling well. Mm. And that's the day they achieved the greatest, greatest healings. Mm. And they wonder, what is that? how yeah. come I wasn't feeling well and yet I had more people recovering today? It's because their immunity that day was high. high. <laughs> so it was a sharing of that immunity. Yeah. Uh, so it remains mysterious to people. That <laughs> for you to be able to go into that scripture that says by his stripes we are healed it, it's what we would call maybe a common scripture because we've been exploring it and hearing it for so long yeah. but to still be able to extract something new from there at this stage and to show us that it's the wounds were necessary and because for the they, activation they of the active. immunity yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's my brain. and when you share that immunity now you're actually healing other people that, that, that's you see, we are, we are trying to cover every area here because somebody thinks, because I'm always sick, mm. then there, is, there can't be any healing in my body to give to other people. I'm actually in need of healing. Mm. But while you're being sick, 
what else is happening in that body? Mm. Immunity. Immunity is happening. Yeah. The same way that your body is trying to fight against that affliction, you can extend that warfare, that fight to, bodies of other. to other people's body, into other people's bodies. Yeah. And they recover. Just like a baby, when a baby is still in the mother's womb, uh, that baby is surviving on the immunity yes. of the mother. It's being shared. Mm. Mm. So health can be distributed. My personal experience can actually be distributed mm. among his brethren. Mm. That's, that is why every part of the body has to be connected to the other part but, so that there's a continuous flow of blood. Wow. But is it always up to you, the healer? Because at two points today you spoke about whether it's um, Timothy and him being strong enough to, yeah. Yeah. to tap into the flow of his father. Mm. And then you also spoke about <clears throat> if we know what to do to be able to uh, enjoy the victory that mm. Jesus really won. So that, that seems to indicate that there's an onus on us yeah. if we are the ones to be healed um, or an onus on them if they're the ones to be healed by us. Yeah. For them, there's something that they need to do. What, what is it that they need to do to be able to tap in? 